In this video, we'll look at setting up the foliage background that exists between the wall house and the hemisphere. I'll begin in Photoshop. There's two pieces of information that are being used for the background foliage information. You'll notice one of my images here looks like uh, some sort of pine tree. And this piece of information is combined with an opacity map uh, that you see here where I've got uh, just black, white, and gray that makes up the opacity map. When the two are combined as a Material Insight 3D Studio, the black area becomes transparent, the white area becomes opaque, and the gray area is a sort of fall off in between the two. I'll set up the foliage element as a cylinder. If I go to the Create menu and inside my standard primitives, I'm going to locate a cylinder object and I'm going to click and drag so that I have some sort of geometry out there in the distance um, that would be appropriate for my trees. I'll go ahead and drag up to what I think would be the height of this row of trees. And of course, this geometry still needs to have its normals flipped and the top and bottom torn off of it. So I'm going to have to get uh, inside some other three-dimensional view to gain access to that. And let's go ahead and rotate about here and uh, we may need to temporarily hide the dome so that we can get a hold of this. Let's see. No, we have the uh, cylinder selected here. So with the cylinder selected, I'm going to reduce it to an editable poly and we'll use the polygon topological level and pick the surface on top of the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, we could do the same with the geometry that's at the bottom of the cylinder. I'm going to select and delete that. Next, the edible poly that used to be the cylinder needs to have its normals flipped so they face inward towards the scene. We'll pull down to the normal modifier and you'll notice now it brightens up because our normals are facing towards the light source and interacting with them. So we have something that would be the equivalent of uh, let's say a tree row in the background. By the way, this does not have to be a regular geometry. It could be something that is uh, manually drawn in to be fairly irregular and then extruded. Let's proceed with setting up the material that's going to be mapped on here. We'll pull down to Material Editor and set up a new slot. Uh, this will also be a standard material since we're using Scanline. And I'll select Standard. And inside the standard material, I'm going to set up a diffuse map that matches up with the foliage we saw a short time ago. And that uh, foliage is located in one of my directories here. Let's find it. This, like the other material that we set up for the sky, also is um, in no need of real world scale because it wasn't created that way. And uh, we'll also be running this in Scanline. So we'll go ahead and set the tiling to one for right now. What this means is the number of times of tiles are going to propagate across the geometry and we're going to handle that through a UVW map. Let's go back to parent. So we have foliage as our basic color but we're going to move down into the other maps and I'm going to use the same piece of information in a bump channel to try and give the material a little bit of a relief and uh, we may also choose to use this uh, a little bit under specular level and uh, on all of these we should be using instance that way if we make a change to one then the the sort of geometric properties of that map will move across to, um, all of the other maps. So instance should be the preferred method uh, of copying here. I didn't do it down below, so we'll repeat that. Specular level then can be uh, increased. We should see it get a little bit more sparkly or vibrant over there. Maybe the highlights on the leaves will pop out a little bit, make this a little more three-dimensional. Okay, so uh, we have most of the information here that has to do with color. Let's go ahead and drop this onto our geometry by using Assign Material to Selection. You need to select the button here, Show Standard Map and Viewport for it to show up. And you'll notice um, instantly that we now see the tree-like information on here, but uh, we don't have any control over its placement yet. So we need to add the UVW map. Let's go ahead in the modifier stack and pull down to where you find UVW map. Select that. This will also be a cylindrical map. And we don't want the real world co coordinates. You'll see now we can start to see the pixels inside that map more clearly. Obviously the map is stretched around the entire cylinder so there's a lot of distortion and uh, we're going to need to make some adjustments um, on our map. So 
One of the ways to do that is to adjust the map size. This is a cylinder, so that's not exactly desirable. And the other is to increase or decrease the number of tiles in any direction. So in the horizontal direction, you'll notice as I increase the tiling, the foliage starts to look a little bit more sensible in terms of uh, the graphics. Clearly, the upper portion of the tree needs to be eroded uh, to make sense in terms of um, how a tree appears in the real world and the reduction in foliage as you move up into, into the sky. So inside the opacity channel, we'll select the None button and we'll bring in a new bitmap and this will be the black and white grayscale or opacity map that I'd produced and shown earlier in Photoshop. Background trees opacity map. We'll select that. We want to be able to see what this map looks like as it's deployed across the surface here. We'll need to switch from the diffuse map over to the opacity map inside of our viewport here so that we can see it. We also need to be certain this is also not in real world and we're also going to tile this once. You can see we'll start to see the opacity map back here in the distance but because of the asymmetrical property of the map we're seeing seams as the map is tiled and propagated across the scene. So what I'm going to choose to do for the opacity map is mirror the tile. This will cause a book matching from one tile to the next and of course it can be evident that it is tiled if you're not careful and the trick here is to space this out so that it's not noticeable. It's usually a good idea for the opacity map tiling to not sync up with the diffuse map and the way to handle that is not to change the tiling in UVW map but to change the tiling directly inside the material. So you can see we can increase and decrease the tiling um, of this opacity independent of what was going on in the UVW map. We might also choose to offset the map so that we don't notice exactly where a seam begins and ends. If we go ahead and test this out, we should now find the foliage shows up here and the upper portion has been made to disappear because of the opacity map. And of course you can see now after I've rendered this that my foliage has been compromised or eroded here because of the opacity map I'm seeing through to the sky beyond. We could set up elements in the distance there that would represent landforms and so forth. But probably more importantly, between the wall and this foliage in the distance, we might set up other lower scale concentric uh, forms and patterns that could similarly be mapped with um, low-lying vegetation and so forth. When you set up foliage like this, always think more like a director. Elements that are uh, some distance away, it's best to use limited polygons and rely primarily on mapping. But it's also a good idea to place elements in the foreground, such as a parametric tree or some sort of foliage element. If you look inside AEC Extended, we can find the foliage elements. You could place uh, the trees here in the foreground and have one of its branches hang into the scene. 